That was really awkward. I just... Day seven of Figure A 2020, which means week one is in the books. Well done for getting this far. Woo! Why did we pick life drawing of all things, such a difficult thing to do, and then decide to do it for a full month every day? I feel like, you know, we could have picked watching movies and ice cream and then just done that for one afternoon. But we've done this now for seven days, so we might as well finish it. Um, before we get to some of the drawings, and by the way, I've absolutely loved seeing all the drawings on Instagram, on the community area of our website. It just brings so much joy to me to see you guys are pushing yourselves so hard. Um, but before we get to feedback on some of the drawings, I just wanted to say a little bit about the censorship, you know, that we experience as life drawing artists. You've probably noticed that uh, Crocky Cafe can't post on their YouTube channel anymore. They have a Vimeo channel instead now, which is great. Uh, but we can't even link directly to the videos, the Crocky Cafe videos. We've been warned for that, which is why you kind of have to go off and find it yourself. Or on our website, there's all the links up there. Um, That's you ridiculous. You may have noticed we never have had any ads on our videos ever, which is good in terms of the viewing experience, hopefully. You don't have to sit through some, some ad every time. But it does make it really hard because we, you know, to, to fund the channel and to keep it going. Um, and so, you know, thank you to everyone who joined in our course last year. That is how we fund this whole thing. Um, and so you guys basically have allowed this whole figurary thing to happen, at least on Love Life Drawing. One thing I don't fully understand is the people who are flagging us. That's viewers. That's not YouTube and Instagram. That's people out there seeing this stuff and saying, hey, this is bad. And I'm like, why are you watching then? You know, like I, I don't uh, have an interest in like hair gel. <laughs> so I don't watch videos about hair gel. You know, it's, it's kind of been a strange part of the experience of running this channel. I guess I just wanted to share it with you a little bit. Drop it, Maggie. So onto the drawings, much more importantly. Okay, this was Gordon, and by the way, Gordon, thank you so much for being such a great participant in the community, giving encouragement to everyone. It's really, really cool. And lots of you guys are, are doing that, and I love seeing it. I love reading all your posts and encouragement. The thing that I wanted to do here is, firstly, the rib cage tilt. Don't straighten out the pose. So um, let the rib cage be tilted back. And when the when things are fold, like when something's folded, it's not as long anymore, right? So when there's this kind of fold, don't elongate the torso as if it wasn't folded, you know, and make it just the same length, but with a fold in it. You've got to shorten up the torso. Elongating the torso is a really common issue in life drawing. So what I did here, I, as much as possible, I like to not draw over people's drawings because that seems kind of like, then it's my drawing but just to move things around with the same marks if I can. And so what I wanted to do was so rotate cool the rib cage, bring this. it down, shrunk the head a little bit um, and brought that down with it, of course. And then in the legs, I thought that there could be more flow in those legs rather than like, you know, two kind of fairly parallel kind of curves that are a bit symmetrical. Let's find these big S curves. Let's find you know, big S curves that flow together down the legs. I, try, I put on the screen a couple of different uh, curves for the side of the leg and the front of the leg that might be helpful. Now, having said all of that, I absolutely love the drawing. I love, you know, Gordon said he needs more practice with the brush pen. I love the marks, the commitment, the boldness and the courage that went into the drawing. So we're going to look at Nikolai's drawings. I hope I pronounced your name right, Nikolai or Nikolai. I love the fact, I can see that you're committing to your lines. I think you're using pen, which is a great way to commit to your lines. I can see that you're pushing yourself based on the lessons that we've been, you know, the tutorials. Um, and I think so many things are working great. Um, just, you know, like I, on this pose, I feel like you, you did push what was there, which is really cool. So one thing is I kind of lost a sense of the pelvis and often the bones of the pelvis are sticking out a bit. And even in a short pose, Getting a little sense of that. Is this right here on this part of the arm? It looks like 
the torso is in front of the arm here. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I feel like I don't know enough about arm anatomy to know like where, whether, I don't know, the, it should be covering it right here, I think, since this arm should be in front of the torso, right? I, I don't know. That's just my instinct. You know, we, I've, we talk so much about the pelvis being essential and just a little sense of that ridge on the bony bits of the pelvis sticking out because it's being kind of thrust forward. That is going to help give this sense of structure. And we're, we're, we're yeah, focusing totally. on big gestural curves, but giving a little sense of structure within that it kind of anchors all that movement and flow. So, and you did, I think you got that in the rib cage. I can see the rib cage arch kind of pushing forward and then, you know, the midsection kind of um, sort of stretching between uh, down from the rib cage. But then it would be nice to see the same thing on the pelvis, just a little bit of the pelvis sticking out. Then that rear leg, there's a big flow down that leg and you kind of straightened it up. And if anything, we want to exaggerate that. So bring back that curve for the leg. That's a nice big flow for that leg. Down that arm, I felt like there was some nice, these kind of opposing curves or cascading curves, which you could bring out down both arms. Um, so that's just a little idea. On the other pose, I felt like you could have brought things in on the torso more. You know, that was the big thing in that pose was the, the rib cage coming on this. I feel like it's amazing how much like a lot of these drawings can improve, can be improved just by shifting the position of the same marks. I feel like it sort of lends credence to what Volan was talking about, like, why are you focusing on line quality? Depending on like, I don't know, if you want to do digital painting, you don't need good lines. You just need to understand the form and like the concepts of the gesture and the flow. And I feel like this is like being a big example of that. Like you don't need to have the best line quality. You just need to like do those exaggerations and like the proportion and stuff. They can be separate and still make a good drawing. This angle, the pelvis coming back, it's a very beautiful angle and I felt like you could have sharpened that up. And then the, her butt crack has shifted off to become quite central and that's something that we often do. The, uh, if the pose is kind of rotated to our eyes a bit so we can see one side more than the other, we'll often try and centralize the things, make it too uh, straight on and symmetrical. So don't do that. Um, you know, try and keep that kind of rotation. In the pose. So these were Alma's drawings. And again, I just love to see how Alma is pushing, really this pushing so into the things that we talked about, finding these curves, looking behind the reality of the pose and instead finding the movement and gesture behind it. And the thing that I kind of felt was just slightly lost was a little bit of a sense of the structure. Um, I kind of lost some of the pelvis again being there. I, I do sense uh, a little bit of the rib cage, but you know the rib cage not not quite not quite got the form on the rib cage, not getting feeling much of the pelvis. So just little lines to indicate that. Um, and again, some of these kind of cascading curves or opposing curves down the arms, which I really like. Um, and then kind of pushing into that, you got the angle on that leg, but maybe you could push into the, uh, the flow, the big S curve down the front of the leg. Although I think actually you did really get that quite well. And then similarly on the other one, bring out the butt and the pelvis on a sharp angle and don't kind of make the butt really straight on and centralize the, the butt crack, but allow it to be a little bit off center. Um, but, you know, great job. I really like the one, you know, that kind of gargoyle pose that, that Saturn did. Um, I really love the drawing that you did on, on that one. And actually all the drawings. I mean, the, the main feedback is lovely. Lovely uh, balance between structure and gesture. Lovely exaggerations and really good job on just going for it. So, so the next one is Quinn. Quinn did our course last year. These are so cute. Does a great job with everything. Gesture, structure, proportion, um, simplification. I love the uh, legs But I did think here. that some of the curves were, could have been kind of flowing together a bit more, flowing into each other, kind of giving 
more momentum to the flow. I you know, sometimes one way I like it. to think about this is how would water run Doggy. through these curves? If you had two symmetrical curves, then the water would just kind of go, right? But when you have a beautiful like cascading uh, curves that kind of flow together, the water's going to rush through that and speed up if anything. So I think Quinn could do maybe a little bit with some of these thighs in that area, but I'm really kind of nitpicking to be honest. But the main thing I thought was more the line quality. When you do a line with your whole arm with confidence, the line itself has movement and flow in it because Quinn already knows where, what line to put down. So now it's a matter of making the line itself beautiful. So David Hi, is getting in, is simplifying things down well and getting in some nice curves. David has a couple of tendencies. And when you have tendencies, like often I think I found that the heads were enlarged on David's drawings and the legs were a bit short, which is actually a really common one. That's always great because that means that you can fix like big things in your drawings just by fixing those couple of tendencies. So that's what I did. I shrank the head a little bit, extended the legs, also brought that leg back. You know, a lot of people straightening up that leg. That leg is on a big, nice curve. So let's lean into that. Let's exaggerate that. Definitely don't straighten that one out. Um, but I noticed that on a couple of David's drawings. And so it tended to be the same thing, to elongate the legs and shrink the head. And then interestingly, Richard Powell said that's what he likes to do. He likes to ex lean into that. And what's interesting is the things that Richard Powell exaggerates are the opposite of things that I've noticed a lot of people do when they're starting out. So obviously, if there is a strong, if there's a strong angle on the torso, he exaggerates it. A lot of people when starting out will reduce it. And so by learning from him, we might like get to about right. Like our tendency is to reduce it. His tendency is to exaggerate it. So if we learn from him, we might get somewhere in the middle and be just about right. And it's the same with the shrinking the head and elongating the legs. And then these were Leslie's drawings and Leslie did a good job pushing into exaggeration and simplifying. I actually think Leslie could push further make a sharper angle on the torso, push the torso in more and then let it come out again more. Push that leg back and let things flow from all the way from the torso and the pelvis all the way down that leg and let it come back, don't straighten it out. But lovely job, everyone here has done such a good job. I hope you guys don't mind that I did this sitting out in the park with the dog, but it's just too sunny so not cute. to. So cute! This love week how he's coming up, this. we're going to start. We've got a couple of days just thinking more about gestural curves um, and about a little bit about mindset. And then on day ten, we're going to start with Lane Brown, which is I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to that and super excited about that. So I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. And you know what? I just want to say thank you all for making this such a fun experience so far. You can find your uh, practice session at vimeo.com slash crocky cafe. And thank you to Vimeo for being cool with life drawing. So yeah, see you guys tomorrow. Cool. So that was adorable and wholesome. I love the way that he was doing the critiques, like keeping the original lines and stuff, because I think that shows that you can do it. If you know what I mean? Are you in the symbol stage, Ooh. the drawing what you see stage, the Oops, simple- Let's not have autoplay. Jay-Z, can you deal with the the weirdness going on? Bless you. Man, what a what a problem.
Oh, and above, uh, there was another user too. If you could deal with that one as well. Thank you. I know, I'm sorry. They shall return tomorrow. They are dearly remembered. <laughs> I'm gonna go check on my video real fast that I just uploaded. What is on your keyboard? Um, that's some sheet music right there. That's a, you know, a music book. That is a box of club crackers. And those are batteries on top of a receipt. <clears throat> Today's poses are easy, don't worry. Great, I love it. I love those high quality, easy poses. Okay, so he said that he couldn't link the uh, Croaky Cafe videos, so I guess I'll be safe. Here is the February 2020 page on Love Life Drawing. If you scroll down to the bottom and you go to uh, day seven, you can find today's Croaky Cafe practice reel. So I am excited to get started. Now I gotta switch the sources again. Such a problem. That is not a food table? Yeah, it is. What are you talking about? Maybe I should make a, a piano video for the channel sometime. Because I can't play piano. This is someone else's piano. Um, I'm not adept at it at all, but I've been practicing a lot. You know, just like for funsies, playing songs that I want to, like, I, I, not formally or anything. And I've been having fun, so, I don't know. Perhaps it would be interesting to some. Okay, great. It's actually updating. Oh, no. I've lost connection to my Apple Pencil once again. Like a dummy. Let us connect it. I can finally learn how to play my food table as well. I mean, it is necessary, of course. Okay. It's a good size. Y'all have issues. Hey, hey, no need to call names around here. I'll just continue to hoard musical instruments. It's Larry Withers! I'm Larry Withers, and this is Day 7 of February 2020 figure drawing month. Last year I participated in February and saved all of my drawings. Reviewing my work I noticed real growth between day one and the end of the month. I hope you're saving your drawings. It might be interesting to see how much you've progressed over the course of February. Let's set a special day aside at the end of the month where we can Serene. show how much we progressed. Thank you for following. And I don't know why it says subscribed. What is wrong with these notifications? But thank you very much for following. Welcome to the mythology where talent is a myth. Boop. Uh, so now I've only gotten an acoustic guitar, electric guitar, violin, and flute. <gasps> Do you have any videos of you playing them? I feel like that would be so fun to watch. This is the end of the first week, which means Kenzo will use today's <laughs> lesson to review your drawings posted to Instagram. 
I find these reviews very enlightening and instructive, and I think you will too. To see today's lesson, go to Love Life Drawing by following the link below. Please post your drawings to Instagram, hashtag February 2020. We'd love to see what you're doing. Enjoy today's drawing session, and we'll meet back here again tomorrow. I used to be pretty good, but after I fucked up my hands, I can't play anymore. I'm trying to relearn, though. Well, good luck to you. Oh, today's model is named Karma. Start with three one-minute poses. <clears throat> Just holding the guitar right hurts. Oh, I'm sorry. That sucks. This music is pretty chill. dear. I drew a dick right off the bat. Hey, hey. That's just art, okay? No need to call it names. Oh dear, there's lots of conversation happening, help. I didn't draw a wiener, I was just drawing, damn it. It's called art. Turned pretty good. What is rude? He thinks I attempted to draw a penis, but I did not. It was simply a torso of a lady person. He's just got it out for me. Oh no. Is it not updating my screen? Oh, what a pain. Oh no. Oh 
Okay. Let's see. If I can reconnect. This is so weird. That's never happened before. Okay, hopefully it reconnects because if it doesn't, I'm going to be really upset. Go. Go. Freaking. Okay. Let's go. Did it work? Ah, oh, bless. It worked. So I'm going to change the screen in case any potentially sensitive information exists. And then we're gonna transition back. Wait a minute, what? What, what, what is everyone? Who do you guys think I am, huh? Huh? Myth, sweetie. Jesus, you guys think, ugh. Hey, that was supposed to be private? Excuse you. I, I would never, I would never ever say such a thing. <laughs> so yeah, I think this one minute pose came out pretty okay. Do you guys also think it would actually sell better? Bet those guys who think you're Japanese would love that. I don't think they look highly upon porn artists. I would love to make loads of money though. That sounds like a high quality thing. You gotta throw away your morality. That's right, you guys are gonna like, I'm just gonna do it and then nobody will ever know. Cause it'll be on some super secret account through like 20 layers of VPNs. going on oh my god I'm gonna blah, blah, blah. my friends have good morals they refuse commissions that go against their morals and won't and still and they still look money so I asked myself what if my taste in drawing doesn't even have an audience You're gonna be broke forever well see then you got to get an audience for you people will buy your stuff just because they like you that's the way to go um like my friend had to turn down a commission the other day because the guy wanted the girl crying and not enjoying it. Ah! Uh, I'm just watching a video on the side and the piano stops and I hear porn. It feels weird, champ. I used to do porn art. Back to my vid. Uh, yeah, I mean, as an artist, you should be able to stand behind what you draw. It's still out there on the internet. There are tentacles involved. Otherwise, it would affect your ability. To just another aspect. I suppose so. I, I, I don't know. It's... Focus and ready for the five minute pose. All right, I think I should probably. All right, all right, all right. Back to drawing, back to drawing. <laughs> OK. 
can't be. This music! This classic music. Yeah, I know, right? That's so funny. I'm like dying from the music right now. It's like the generic ukulele thing. This is just generic household music. fan of this music though. That's a good time. so bad. You're right, these are a little bit simpler than perhaps previous poses have been. <clears throat> yeah, why do all these models have such like an apparent like, you know, the triangle thing above the butt? Like, it's also apparent in these models. I guess it's because they're relatively thin. Because they're in shape, Lamau. Yeah, I guess so. bit of a weird pose though. Jeez. Post to your tailbone? <laughs> Is that the new like feet pics? Letter. That would be so fun. I love how they include some of the video of them getting ready for the pose and stuff and like I think it's really funny when sometimes they show the video and like it looks nothing like the pose in the end I'm it's just the little things that are really amusing
sometime uh advanced yoga flashbacks oh man i still have five more minutes and i don't know what i i don't know what to do with this pose i'm so bad okay i guess i'll refine the head a little bit because it's looking weird i can add in a nose And some lip. Perfect the butt. Give her a funny face. Okay. That's cute. No time for the face. Yeah, okay. No time for the face. Let's see, let's give her some more shoulder area. Exaggerate that shoulder. Ah, the tilted back up head. Oh man, I just realized I totally made the tilt a lot shallower. Man. I'll never get out of these basic mistakes. Goodbye. Yeah, same. I feel it. Might as well use up the full time and see how far you get. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm out of time now. Man, this stuff just passes so fast, you guys. Ridiculous. She looks like a Lego person. I'm gonna add a little extra hair. Let's go. How did the 15 second poses feel to you? I wanted to commit seppuku after that. I relate. Those were wild. I also felt really free. I don't know. I feel like doing 15 second poses would be a fun workout at some point. Or a warm up, I guess I should say. Not a workout, lol. Um, a man has fallen into a river in Lego City. Is that supposed to be. Is that a reference to like the ad or something? That sounds vaguely familiar. That feel when 15 seconds only suffice for three lines. Yeah, relatable. Okay, okay. Yay. I got a reference to something in the world ever. I'm proud. I'm gonna give myself a pat on the head. All right. Woo! Pat on shoulders for the intellectual. Pat on head. Oh, heck. <laughs> Did I say on the head? <laughs> I meant like shoulders. Or, or no, like pat on the back. That's what people say, right? Oh my god. I don't know what's going on. Pat's head. That's like the anime thing. Pat, but yes. <laughs> All right, let's do some art. <clears throat> Maybe I'll try like the 12 line challenge where you get 12 lines to draw the figure. I think that would be fun. All right, let's go. I feel like the first one, Pat the nipple. Whoo, uh, Twitch might kick me off. <laughs> I feel like there's like one big line here. 
Okay, that's one. Um, one line. Two, three, four, um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Does that convey the figure in 12 lines? I don't really think so. That looks weird as heck. Five minutes always seems like it's so much time until it isn't. Yeah, relatable, relatable. All right, maybe I'll give myself, I'm, I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna try this again in five, uh, in 12 lines. Okay, so one. Could have used an S for the leg. That's true, I could have done one line. All right, so that's one line. Two. Three. Ah, oh, man. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I don't know, it seems a little bit better. Everything's like more connected, at least. I don't know, I don't like this exercise. I don't make pretty drawings. <laughs> Um, so I guess I'll just try to draw it again for realsies. Did you, do you watch Ethan Becker? No, I do not. Ethan Becker. Let's see. Oh! He will destroy your art? He's the guy in the jacket. He will destroy your art, but you will enjoy it. I have seen his, um, I sent you him a while back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen his videos that you've sent me and I've seen his videos in my recommended. I've seen it a lot. I saw his video um, posted on a website which shall not be named right now. And like the people there seem to hate him. So. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not afraid of not making a pretty picture. I'm not afraid at all. <laughs> well, he's attractive and successful, so of course they hate him. He worked for DreamWorks and quit lols. Oh my God. What a mad lad. All right, so let's try to draw this again. Uh, convincing. You know what's really scary? Doing line art, yes. And working on the background layer midway, no! Uh, Jolly B10. I am doing well. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Let's see if I can capture some of this look right here. I can't go wrong if I don't draw backgrounds. Exactly, but Procreate always has a background layer, so does Photoshop. That's right, a spooky, spooky background layer. <clears throat> Can I 
actually d draw anything on it though. The background layer here is just like a solid fill of color, so I don't think I can even draw on it. Busy myself, slowly working the fence and drawing into my schedule. Oh yes you can, trust me. Oh dear. That's good. I'm pretty busy myself, but also trying to fit in the drawing. I'm kind of getting destroyed by these daily streams, but it's too much fun to stop. So, <laughs> off I go. Sorry, I'm in the meta bang and CSP gang. That's why you lock layers so you don't draw on the wrong one. Well, I mean, I feel like the point is that I forget to lock layers or whatever, and then I suffer. What a time. I respect everyone who uses GIMP and MS Paint. Layers? Never heard of them. Yuki gets it. Oh my god. Oh my god. I, I'm like, I'm a freaking layer hoarder. I'm addicted to making new layers so that everything is like preserved. I don't know. I just have like such a mindset of like, I don't want anything to be permanent. I want to always be able to revert, change, improvise, adapt. Like, oh, I don't know. I, I, like just the thought of only getting one layer to work on is like giving me chills. I could never. This foot, oh my God, feet, please. I'll never understood people who don't think do things like me. <laughs> like Sai is for yaoi artists and secret artists. Okay, so do you know, oh, do you know people like art program stereotypes? Photoshop people are pretentious, A, eh? AF, or? That's funny, is that right? Jay-Z, can you confirm? Yes. MS Paint users hate themselves. That's so funny. Are there any uh, MS Paint users in the club here? Who can confirm or deny this stereotype? I actually know, knew a Psy artist who only did yaoi. I didn't know that was a thing. I did some MS Paint sketching a few days back. I used Psy for a really long time and only stopped because an update to my tablet messed it up. Uh, there are so many people who use Photoshop, so it's hard to stereotype. Or maybe it's not the people who use Photoshop, but like Photoshop elitists who say that Photoshop is like the only real professional drawing software or whatever. And I think, I don't know, like Psy has a pr reputation with porn artists because like I see Psy tutorials all over DeviantArt. So I feel like it's like really popular among that demographic. People who actually pay for Photoshop, Jay-Z, allow me to correct you. There's gonna be elitist of any type for any software. It's not an art software and it infuriates me that people say it's the only program professionals use. Lol? Oh dear. Jay-Z's wrath against Photoshop has been triggered.
Uh, lo, 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 what's going on? Um, I feel so called out. I used it for three years. Sai is cheap, which is why it's popular. Lightroom is for photos. I was used to forced to use Photoshop in art college, and I fucking hate it. I never heard of anyone saying that. G buzzes. Um, along with my Apple products, Clip Studio people often draw comics. Are you saying PS is not for art and OC fan art? Have you tried Clip Studio Paint on iPad? I use Clip Studio Paint on my Cintiq, Apple computers. Somebody highlighted their message. Wow. Uh, it was better when everyone po painted on the same canvases. What does that mean? You mean like, like linen? <laughs> oh dear. Okay. So I guess I should say Lightroom is for a batch. Um, uh, photo uh, retouching for photographers. Photoshop is used for image manipulation. It's not really meant to be a painting program, just like it's not really meant to be a video editing program, even though it has that capability. But it's very uh, robust and powerful, so it can be used for a lot of things, even though it's not its specialty. Uh, I guess most artists on Mithril's list aren't artists. Huh? What's going on? Like a boomer would say. What's going on? Oh my god, since most of them use PS. Yeah, it's not that you can't you do art with it. It's that it's not made for art. I mean, that's not a problem with using it. I used Photoshop for a long time. Uh, to do all my drawings and stuff, as you guys can tell if you look back through my videos. Uh, it remade for art, digital art. I keep forgetting I have Sims 4, SMH my head. What's going on? Well, I, I wouldn't, like, it's not misusing Photoshop if you use it for art. It's just not an art software. I mean, like, it doesn't matter what it's, I mean, it's a free country. You can use whatever you want, like. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. What's going on? Help. I can't tell what's going on. Um, uh, Tokyo Ghoul manga was made using the Sims props. There was an artist who uses his peen to paint. America intensifies. Lamau. That's really funny. I... <laughs> I wish I could make art with my peen. Although, wouldn't that be kind of dangerous? Like, do you really want to get paint on it and stuff? I feel like that would be bad for your health. I don't know, that might just be me though. There's edible color. Miss Peen is too big for painting with. Would put holes in the canvas. Hey, we were supposed to keep that like between you and me. What what is it with you spilling all my secrets on the live stream, huh? Just put a condom on. That way the paint won't get in the hole. Can you change brush sizes? What does that mean? What, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, I've never seen the raw thing. Maybe he uses something to cover it. Oh, can you change brush sizes though if you're using your peen? Skin could get, get irritated, poor guy. I mean, I feel like if his skin got irritated, he would have figured it out after the first try and then used the cover from then on. I mean, how many guys would like, yeah, this like totally fucked it up. Let's do it again. <laughs> How did this combo happen? Photoshop's fault. That's right, it's all Photoshop's fault. Damn it.
Wow, haters. There's also a feminist artist who puts water balloons of paint in her vag and lets it drop onto the canvas to make art. Leave the booty full Photoshop users alone. Team Clip Studio Paint, where are you guys at? That's funny. Yeah, I think Clip Studio Paint is gaining a lot of market share lately, which is good. Everything needs competition, otherwise there's no innovation. Like Adobe is getting really bloated and arrogant with the way that they're charging for their products. Like people do not need every Adobe product in existence. What's going on? Rise up, chilling with my liquify. Had it since it was Manga Studio, a voice from the back. Clip Studio people won't afford PS. True, that's why we pirate you almost like they want us to. Clip Studio Paint is great, but doesn't top Photoshop's brushwork without workarounds. It's so damn easy. Uh, I literally had a conversation about the business model of Adobe with JS the other day. Really? Man, I remember back when you could actually buy their software, back when I was in school. And now everyone has to not. It's like upsetting. That was like a millennia ago. Yeah, so sad. I'm like old now. Y'all remember back when Adobe let you buy things? <laughs> Me neither. Dementia. Um, PS software was like 600 bucks back then. Yeah, but I had, uh, when I was taking my graphic design class, like my professor, my teacher was like, hey, like if anyone wants to buy Photoshop, I, I can give you a special price because you guys are using it for the class. And you know what? I should have bought it back then. Because I would have been used it I would have used it for years at this point at like the education price, which would have made it a lot cheaper. But I just thought like, nah, it's fine. Would I really use Photoshop that much in my life? Mm. Not if you pirate I'm not a fan of software pirating as a programmer myself. I feel like, you know, if I do work, I deserve to get paid for it. And I'm sure other people feel the same way. If you gain money from using their software as an individual and your damage to them is high enough for them to want to hire a lawyer, they will punish you. But otherwise, they couldn't give a damn, even if you don't profit. Please stop encouraging pirating or I'll have to time you out. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, if they wanted people to use their stuff for free, then they would offer a way for people to do it. But clearly, it's their choice that they don't want people using it despite whatever benefits it might bring them. And, uh, you know, in our capitalistic society, people are allowed to choose whatever business model they want for their software, whether or not it's the most beneficial to them. And I can't just, you know, come in and say like, hey, I don't like the way you're running things, so I'm going to do crime. <laughs> And plus, there's like so many alternatives these days that if we don't support one company's business practices, there's so many, you know, other things to choose from. 
So I don't think it's as big of a deal now as it was a few years ago, back when there were like really no um, alternative drawing softwares that could be comparable to Photoshop. You wouldn't download a car. Uh, or you can use uh, Krita for those tricky filters. I've never really got been able to get Krita to work properly on any of the computers I've downloaded it on. Like it won't work with my drawing uh, tablet or like it just wouldn't, like, like the pen pressure wouldn't work and like whatever. I've always found those you wouldn't steal a TV ads on the VHS tapes because, yeah, people would steal a TV. Creative software UI looks nice and neat, but it isn't for me. Why is that? Nah, Creative UI is crap. Oh, damn. That's a hot take. Please explain, good sir. The brushes are the problem. Interesting. Yeah, I've never really been able to figure out how to use it properly. All right, let's draw another pose. Just casually doing art. Brushes are the problem. It is the bloated art program. It is the most bloated art program I've ever seen, and the UI is buggy. I think it looks modern enough. It's kind of similar to Psy, but I'm not well versed in both. Yeah, I've only tried Psy a little bit, like as you guys saw on my other video. I'm still pretty new to it, but Psy is very like user friendly and pretty easy to learn. I haven't found that with Krita. I think it's honestly really confusing and I've never been able to figure it out. So I just sort of gave up on it. Uh, I've never messed with Krita, mostly because I already have Psy and stuff when it came out. So I had my pro programs already. Yeah, see, that's why you gotta get in early on the market. You can build up a user base, like a nice loyal user base. And then people will already be used to your UI and nobody wants to have to like relearn their UIs and such. Is Sci free? No, but it's cheap. Off topic, but have you guys tried to do the control Z command on traditional mediums after using digital programs? 200 IQ. I'm totally, totally, I try to do it, especially after using um, Procreate because the undo is um, like putting two fingers on the screen. I'll just be like trying to undo my paper and then be very sad after. Things are happening. What kind of computer in terms of specs do you use your Cintiq with? No computer. I catch myself wanting to immediately undo. My Cintiq is 100% standalone. 
Cintiq Companion first gen. I also think it's important to draw traditionally. It forces you to be more mindful about lines and scale. Uh, I use a fountain pen when I draw, so no going back. I like it, but the newer gens are cheaper and better built since this was first gen. Okay, so we're having two different conversations about drawing traditionally along with drawing digitally and the uh, Cintiq Companion. Yeah, I need to do some more traditional stuff. Um, I Now that Uncomfortable has come out with the new Drawbox material, I'm thinking of recording like the next few episodes of the audiobook. I think those would be, you know, nice videos to make to be released while I'm studying for my exam because they're not really time sensitive. And my editor can just like work on them and I can like record a batch and stuff like that. Oh, what's going on? That's why. Uh... Oh dear, what's happening? Uh, that's why most female artists, not trying to sound sexist, but females, especially younger ones, feel intimidated by more professional looking software. You often use it, honestly, it's cheap and easy to use. Mine came from a faulty batch, so I get free lifetime repairs for any battery or charging related issues. I'm not female and I like Psy. How does it feel? How does that have to do with it though? Or is it a joke? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like anyone can get intimidated by a difficult UI. It's not just guys that are tech savvy. Although there might be a correlation. I mean, I like easy to use software with like simple UIs just because I'm a lazy ass human being. <laughs> uh, I've seen a shit ton of males use Psy and shit, and a shit ton of girls use Photoshop. In fact, when I was in college, it was the girls who liked Photoshop. The guys didn't like it. Okay, that feel when Procreate tells you you can only have like five layers. Well, I guess you gotta lower your resolution then. That statement, even if you didn't mean intend it to be, was sexist. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's hard to tell whether something's... I wouldn't say it's necessarily sexist. Perhaps in your experience. Critical Mass 11! Welcome to the mythology where talent is a myth! Um, well, I mean, just because you say all versus a lot doesn't make it not sexist. I'm not saying that it is sexist, but that's not a very good uh, defense. <laughs> like, sexism just has to do with making judgments about someone based on nothing more than a characteristic about them. Yeah, that notification was correct. Yay! Don't worry, IDK Weta. It's all right. Keep the good vibes flowing. Yeah, it's no problem at all. Like, I get it. No feelings were harmed. No bad intent was existing. So... The bot is nowhere to be seen. I don't think the bot is on. I think the bot has to is the one that is used with the uh, Pokemon. So no Pokemon means no bot. <laughs> but thank you so much for following. Welcome, welcome. We're having some fun right now doing some figuary drawings. Contemplating the bigger things in life. I feel like this one's turning out pretty nicely. 
there's some exaggeration and stuff. going on bruh we have a link let's click on said link and look at the results oh my god that is so beautiful I never thought being a visual dev at Netflix would have been goals, but that is goals right now. I think it would be so cool to be good enough that people want me to work on their projects. You know what I mean? I don't know if I would actually want to do that, but being that good, totally goals. Like uh, how Ilya Kushinov like released a movie or something like that. That sounds so cool. Uh, I know, right? I've heard Ethan Becker is also a viz dev, but it's basically a title and they can make him do more and pay the same. Hmm. That's not very nice. Ilya is going places. Yeah, love is art. If there were more trustworthy people around me, I'd take the opportunity. I always hear about artists who regret not taking big jobs where they could have gained experience and meet nice people. Uh, what do you mean? Like, why would they not take the job? Is it because they're worried about being exploited or something like that? Or is it something else? Imagine it to be partly lack of confidence because they're insecure about their skills in general. Oh, I see. Oh man, I feel like I would be in that camp. It's so spooky. It's weird. I don't know. Uh, because, uh, but damn, if they could get into the job wouldn't that boost confidence as well? They probably don't like working for other people like you. Maybe it's a matter of perspective. Imagine getting hired for a $10 million project movie slash game. I mean, I feel like part of it has to do with imposter syndrome, right? 
like the feeling that like the people who are offering you the project are being tricked by you and you're just like oh no 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 like i'm not as ready as you think i am when really they are like i definitely feel that in my life like some level of imposter syndrome where i'm just like i feel like weird because i feel like people don't know the real me and they think i'm like this level of skill when i really feel like i'm here but i'm probably closer to the middle um like you get a job offer but you back out because you think you'll make an embarrassment of yourself and mess up their chances your, your chances at future jobs yeah I'd sweat buckets. Imagine being able to live off art. Speaking of living, making a living from art, Big J's got another commission for me tomorrow. She said she'll have another character for me. Woo! But yeah, but at the end, if they called you, it's because they think you're enough. They think so, but you don't think so. I don't know. I guess you don't have imposter syndrome, which is nice. So maybe you have a more accurate assessment of your skills. But I definitely suffer so much from confidence issues. Like... I don't know, like every time someone compliments me, my first thought is like, they don't understand that I'm not as good as they think I am. I don't, I don't know, it's such a complicated feeling because then it sounds like arrogance, right? Where I feel like, oh man, if I say like, oh no, I'm not really that good, then it's, I don't know, like I'm, I'm being arrogant like oh it's nothing like it truly isn't i, I don't i don't know I, like i don't want to sound arrogant but i also don't want people to like think too much of me and i want people to think too little of me i don't know it's very complicated like people always say like wow you're so good at math if you're like studying math and i'm like no i'm not i'm really not i don't understand anything and then they look at me like what like what i'm like i feel like i don't know things and they're just like what is going on it's part of an artist's trait since there's always room to evolve you never feel good enough it's not even about that i just feel like i'm i'm constantly tricking people into thinking i have skills that i don't like that's how it feels constantly and it's exhausting and draining and it makes it hard for me to like like sell myself at job interviews because i don't want to like Feel like I'm tricking people. I mean, it's like it's more complicated than that because with imposter syndrome, you feel like any external validation is a lie. And even when you make it, as in get like externally validated, then you still feel like you're tricking people. Like, so you really have to deal with the issue directly. Otherwise, you'll always have that same issue. You know what I mean? Then you put an expectation walls that never existed in the first place in front of you. Maybe at some point you can acknowledge yourself. Basically, with imposter syndrome, you genuinely think that you're tricking people and lying to people about being able to do stuff. And like you've tricked people into giving you the position you're in and that you don't deserve it and that you didn't earn it. Exactly. That's what the feeling feels like. So no matter what um, like other people can possibly give me, like a position, job, praise, whatever, I feel like I did it because I, I earned it like through trickery. I don't know. It just sounds, this sounds... I'm sorry if this doesn't make sense for people who don't like suffer from this, but like no matter what test results I get or the job interviews that go well, according to them, I feel like they just didn't really make a true assessment of who I am and that I'm just like a really good actor. I don't know. <laughs> this reminds me of our conversation the other week, Myth, where we revealed that we're jealous of each other for basically the same things. Yeah. 
Man, life is hard. Maybe we're both just like awkwardly suffering from the same thing constantly. Ah, uh, damn. Jealousy is also a big thing, I think, basically for everyone. If you're more confident about yourself and didn't care about the outcomes too much, you do it, though. Suffers and relates to a point. Well, that's why I'm trying to, like, build my confidence, right? Like, true confidence doesn't come from, like, getting promotions and jobs and having people praise your work. True confidence comes from showing yourself that you have what it takes to do the things that you want to do. Yeah, like, I think, and I've been trying to do that. Like, I've been trying to build confidence in myself by saying, today I'm going to cook a meal and I will be able to do it. And then when I do it, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I can follow through on the things in life that I wanna do. And it's like, you know, baby steps, but I think I'm getting there a little bit better every day. I think it's being able to not have others influence how you feel about yourself as well in a good way. I feel like that's a fine line, right? Because like others can have a good influence on you. You don't wanna say like, oh, I'm just an honest asshole and I'm gonna say whatever I want and act however I want and nobody can stop me. You know what I mean? Like social skills are important. Yeah, I feel that. Maybe we're just jealous of each other because we're like the same, Jay-Z. Lol? <clears throat> and we perceive the other person as having gotten over it, but we both haven't. <laughs> A buddy of mine considers to buy an old piece of his for his wall, and it's really outdated, and I do feel like it's not worth anything, but look, here's the catch. Their values will not be the same as yours. We're a mess. It's not about other people. Like, it's not like, it's not about people not complimenting me enough or thinking that my bad stuff is good. It's about thinking that I've just been putting on a face for everyone. Like, by all external measures, I'm a successful math student, but in my heart, I feel like I've just tricked every professor into thinking I'm good at math, and they gave me a good grade for it. It's not reasonable at all, but that's the way it feels inside my head. <clears throat> and I know that doesn't make a lot of sense if you've never gone through it. But when I first heard about this and I read all the descriptions of how it feels, like, it lined up with me to a T. <clears throat> I don't know. It's so strange to me that not everyone feels this way. I always felt like this was like a common thing for everyone. Self-doubt, it's not that I doubt that I can do things. It's that I feel like people don't perceive my actions in the right way. I don't know. 
I mean, I have plenty of confidence. Like, I know that I can do anything I put my heart to or whatever. It's just like, I feel like people aren't reading my actions correctly. And like, believing me more than I believe in myself. The way of thinking sounds like thinking the other person isn't smart enough to notice them being tricked. That's how it sounds to me, but I'm no expert in this. <clears throat> Maybe that's a part of it. Maybe it's like, um, my own arrogance or what's it called? I don't know. A sort of... What do you say? Like, yeah, maybe it's me uh, being condescending toward others and thinking like that they don't have the skills to see through my deception. I feel like that could be a part of it. <clears throat> I, I don't know if that's conscience. No, it's just like, uh, yeah, just, yeah, I guess condescending perhaps condescending like i'm just like oh like why don't you understand that i'm not as good as you think i am you think i'm being i'm like tricking you like right in front of your eyes and you don't even see it it does kind of feel that way i don't know i don't know this is kind of weird to be talking about but yeah i guess i don't know i just have feelings and i don't know how to talk about them <laughs> <clears throat> You have any math study today? I did about 30 minutes earlier and I'm planning on making some dinner and then after doing the arts, I will study some mores. But aren't people who feel like imposters extremely humble as well, which you could take as a good thing. I mean, there's a difference between being humble and saying like, oh, thank you. You know, I worked really hard on it and I'm glad that you're noticing. And there's a difference and reacting like, oh no, like, I can't do that. I can't believe you think that this is good. That's not like, that's not okay. <laughs> because I don't like, it's not, and I don't see why you think it is. So I don't think it's like humbleness. It's not saying like, I don't know. It's hard to describe. Uh, I, I, I. But yeah, I do think a lot of people play it off as being humble. <clears throat> I don't know. It's okay, man. <laughs> I'm having like a mental breakdown. Do do do. Uh, but it will stop you. What do you mean? It will stop you from doing things. <clears throat> Even if you have all these doubts and ways of thinking. Huh? Oh, uh, what do you mean it'll stop you from doing things? Explain, please. I still think it's... <clears throat> Even if you have all these doubts and ways of thinking, I th still think it's very noteworthy and praiseworthy that you s still push through. Like you're doing this despite all that, and you can't deny that. Like if you felt like you lied to your teachers but kept going. Huh? I I'm a little confused. Could you explain? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like a big development in my own self that I'm able to... Oh, will it stop you? No. Especially now that I realize it's a real thing and I can push through and I can like realize it. And plus, am I gonna turn down things that 
I don't know. I'm just like, well, I don't know if I really deserve this, but here I go. I like good grades and a degree. And plus, what would be my argument? Um, hello, I think I've been unfairly given a good grade. <clears throat> that knee bump. Do people not like the knee bump? Oh my god, okay, maybe I will fix the knee bump. How's that? Cartoonish knee. Lol. That's funny. I'm not trying to be cartoonish. Like, just over time, I've been able to deal with it better and better and build, like, mental things against, <clears throat> you know, being paralyzed by those feelings. I mean, it's an explanation, but not an excuse, right? Sure, I have these feelings, but if I just stayed in my head all day and did nothing, then I would have nothing. And I want to have things, so here I am. <clears throat> it was so out of place because I've never seen you draw a knee like that before. Lol? Capitalism. Capitalism. What about the day someone says something really bad about your art? <clears throat> Lol, you made a YouTube channel and post your drawings there. Like, it's one of the hardest things for most. I don't know. Well, I mean, I do know because people have said like really bad things about my art. And like, um, I don't know how I feel about it actually. I don't really think about it that much because I'm just, a learner, you know? I'm just a student. <clears throat> and if people think my art isn't good enough, well, it isn't. But I'm afraid of what my reaction will be when one day I do post my art and I'm no longer posting it as a student who's posting like about my progress and trying to learn, but like as finished art that I want to be judged by the world. I feel like that, that's a little nerve wracking to me that people won't like it and then they'll say mean things about it because you know, like my work is an extension of myself. It's the culmination of what I believe to be like good style and taste. And I mean, saying that it's trash is basically like calling my taste trash, I guess. Although, I guess if someone says, like, your art is trash, then I probably shouldn't listen to their opinion anyways. So, I don't know. <laughs> um, I've seen some of said bad comments about her art and videos. Yeah, I mean, it's never, it's never a fun time hearing bad things about yourself. But, you know, I'm still here. <clears throat> Just always be a student mentally. I mean, true, but like, you know, at some point I have to say like, I have to allow my art to be judged as a finished piece. And I can't hide behind that label forever. True masters are edgy students, edgy quotes. Our eternal students, edgy quotes. We're always learning after all. I mean, that's true, but like, you know, I do, I want to be judged at some point, right? Like, I don't want someone to say like, oh, she's just learning. Like, 
it's okay that she's made all these mistakes. Like, no, like I want true critique, true, like an artist's view of my work. But that's gonna take a lot of mental fortitude from me to take it well and not be insulted or anything like that. And I don't wanna just blow things off like, oh, they're like a stupid hater and whatever. I don't know. Cause I feel like that's like an instinct that a lot of people have. Like if they don't like something of mine, then they must hate me. Or I should just disregard their opinion if they don't agree with me. And I don't wanna do that. I don't know, it's a fine line, it's a fine line. Uh, which is why I critique your, only critique your stuff in private occasionally. Actually, um, I have thought about drawing over people's art like in a critiquing way, but I'll ask them of course. I mean, yeah, totally. Like I'm never offended by a critique or anything like of the sort. It just, you know, hurts a little bit when someone doesn't say that, like, your art is the most perfect thing that's ever graced this planet. <laughs> because it, like, it's like, I don't know, sometimes it's like the proudest thing I've ever made and they immediately start tearing into it and I'm like, ah, my masterpiece. Literally look at the love life drawing video for today. He drew over the images to show where they were going wrong. I've done it with myths art before because if I look back at my stuff now, I'd want people to draw over it and critique it. Yeah, I mean, usually whenever someone like critiques art, it means that they care about you and they care about your growth and they're putting in the effort to help you, right? But some people like just want to tear people down under the guise of like offering critique and help or whatever. And those people are not nice people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is it is a bit weird to like just critique someone and tell them what's wrong with it if they don't ask, right? Unless it's like, you know, like a critique sub or whatever. Would you be okay if I actually drew over the heads from imagination? Me? You? Oh, yeah, I mean like, I'm always open to any critique on my artwork. That is totally fine. I used to include that in my descriptions, but then I felt like it was a little too copy pasty, but I said like, any critique of my work is always welcome, whether it's on my videos, my um, artwork or anything. But you know, like you can only do that because I said it was okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't think you're just supposed to do that to like, you know, anyone casually. Um, well, do that in private, of course. Did you answer? My question or did I not listen? Wait, where? Blank quo? I'm sorry, where? Oh, what happens when you're semi-satisfied by your gestures? Um... I don't know, I will draw... Uh, well, according to Steve Houston, you're supposed to go gesture, structure, gesture, structure. So when I get the first layer of gestures down, I will go on to move on to the structure. And when I move on to the structure and get the structure down, I move back to the gesture. And when I do the gesture, I'll go back to the structure. And then eventually I'll be able to draw humans well with good gesture and proportions and anatomy from imagination. And that's, I think that'll be the most amazing day. Uh, I think this is a selfish aspect as well. I just want people to criticize me as well. I don't want to feel too comfortable. Yeah, totally. And I mean, that's why I am paying people to tell me to destroy my art because I care about growing and not remaining too complacent. And 
And I want someone I can trust to give me good feedback, right? Anyone can say like, I don't like the way you do this or that, but like, how do you know how much to pay attention? I think an important part is looking at people who have a portfolio that you want, that you, uh, that inspires you and like has a style that you know that they can critique well because they know, because they fit your aesthetic. I mean, there's no use like talking, uh, getting critique from someone who is a completely d different genre, who's completely different art goals. Like maybe you draw anime and you want someone to critique you on how well you are exaggerating the features to fit the anime aesthetic. Well, you're not gonna ask like a realistic artist to critique you for that because they don't, because they appreciate different things about a piece of art and they're not going to understand what you're trying to go for. And they won't be able to tell you whether you're doing it well or not. So yeah, that's why I'm paying money. You gotta get those round butts. There's a shortage of such round butts in life these days. <laughs> All right, I might have to head out soon. Actually, I think I'm gonna head out after I put a little finishing touch on this. It's been very fun talking to everyone. However, I feel judged by the face for looking at that butt. She's just like, yeah, like, fuck off. <laughs> I don't know how faces work. Smile? I don't know. I'll just leave it like that. Alrighty. Wow, like, I bet if I scroll back the video, <laughs> I got creepy with the smile. Yeah, maybe no smile. The lighting has like completely changed since the beginning of the stream because the sun has set over this time. Two hours, that's pretty long. I think I'm just procrastinating on studying for my exam. But, wanna raid my friend? Sure, I'm gonna do a little outro so I, because I might be making a video out of all these stream clips. So I will say, ooh. Thank you everyone so much for joining me for these first seven days of February. I'm looking forward to, I guess, what should I say? I'm looking forward to the rest of the month and I hope everyone's had a fun and happy time. Happy Rads is the channel. Okay, how does this work? Where do I click? Um, what is going on? Oh, Raid, here we are. Happy Rads. Let's go. All right, let's hang out with Jay-Z's friend. <laughs> My friends, sweet. Thank you, Jay-Z. Sorry, dude, I can't see shit. Hang on one second. I right, got you. Yeah, sorry, that was uh, me pressing the wrong button. <laughs> That's okay. I uh, got some other stuff here if in case anyone needs stuff. Pop ups and sniper. Cool, sorry. Hello, everyone. Love me some Apex. This is... <laughs> I don't know how to put this. It's not a good thing, is it? People come in and I go, yeah, I hate this game. Uh, th this was less rage-inducing than my other options, so I chose this this evening. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, we're just outside.
I bumped my mic. I'm so sorry. Um. Oh, what do we come? Second. Second on the last round. We're not playing with randoms. Um, so Glenn we know from Overwatch. Drax we know from a long time ago. Terraria or Minecraft. Oh, Overwatch as well. Okay. Nice work. Are we going down? Alright, I think we we do our circles. He spotted them in the circle outside the circle, so I could do with more ammo. We outside the circle as well. I'm just gonna run away. Screw you guys. Oh shit, okay, he's got hostiles the other side. Inside the circle as well, it looks like. I, fire, I can't get up there. I uh, got a hit on one. Glenn. Come back, dude. Oh, he's coming out. No ammo left, five rounds left. Do you have. Fuck, I'm gonna make a run for the body here. Got it. Cool. Oh, crap. Run away! Damn it. Flee. GG. Yeah, GG, guys. washroom quickly thank you very much for the raid as well uh that's roller uh i'll be back in one second we'll do some break videos quick while i'm away um uh one sec need to we cool i'll be back in a minute like one one second see you on the screen
ladder? Yeah, maybe I should do the toilet. I'll, I'll go for the toilet. Right. I'll be back in a second. Which buttons what? didn't you press so we can just like isolate which ones you may have pressed? I didn't press the space button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. Combo mate. <coughs> cool. Sorry, I'm back. I love the coughing Russian kid. <laughs> Rex, really up, dude. Hang on, are we? Who's in? Who's leader? Yeah, we weren't playing ranked. We were just doing quick play. Discord. You saw the dancing jack clip. Wait, ranked? What? Grapple, locked and loaded. You and me, let's take this win. The only person who's gonna lose points here is Glenn. So I feel bad for him, but Hey, dude. Sorry, I'm a thrill though. What were you playing this evening? Thank you. 
Why is he a grenade on me? There's people here. I'm not. Doing arts, cool. I have a look off the stream. I don't know what figure he is. Jay Z's quite right. Jay Z knows the limit of my my stupidness. stupidness by using the wrong phrase but we can go with yours as well <laughs> love you too jay-z the beard uh that may be happening i don't know mm. i'm gonna take the dome oh we've got another team on us See the other team yet? I don't really have a gun at the moment. Okay, I got a gun. Um, I need a heal, so if you guys could hold up. They're right behind me. No, no, we can not see you. Might be something good this way. Hostile spotted. I'm gonna heal up in here. I'm right behind. I'm right here with you, buddy. Uh, Q. Oops, Oops, my bad. Okay, just really scared me there. But yeah, I don't need a group heal. I'm just, I just need the personal heal. Stupid happy. Alright, someone's been in here already. It's all cleared out. Oh, I've got steps right inside. There's a backpack here as well. Yeah, 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 yeah I got them. They run on us. Yeah, drop back. Then just kill everyone? No. I have been down. Get him some. 
again. <laughs> Alright, one two down here. Yeah, we are home. Damn it.